Perfect Dark from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, en.wikipedia.org. Perfect Dark is a first-person shooter video game for the Nintendo 64 game console. The game was developed by Rare, creators of the multi-million selling GoldenEye 007, an earlier first-person shooter with which Perfect Dark shares many gameplay features. The game was first released in Canada and the United States in May 2000, where it was greeted with critical acclaim. PAL and NTSCJ releases followed soon afterwards. The game features a single-player mode consisting of 17 missions in which the player assumes the role of Special Agent Joanna Dark, an operative for the fictional Carrington Institute, as she attempts to foil a conspiracy by rival corporation Datadyne. It also includes a range of multiplayer options, including cooperative and counteroperative modes, in addition to traditional deathmatch settings. Technically, it is one of the most advanced games developed for the N64 with optional high-resolution graphics and Dolby surround sound. In September 2000, a separate game starring Agent Joanna Dark, also titled Perfect Dark, was released for the Game Boy Color. Although set in the same universe, it follows a separate storyline. With the use of the transfer pack, a Game Boy game allows certain features within the Nintendo 64 version to be unlocked. Perfect Dark Zero, a prequel to Perfect Dark, also developed by Rare, was a launch title for the Xbox 360 in 2005. Perfect Dark Initial Vector, a novel by Greg Rucka, was published later that year. Section 1. Storyline Perfect Dark is set in the year 2023 against the backdrop of an interstellar war between two races, the Mayans, who resemble the stereotypical greys, of alien abduction folklore, and the Skeeter, reptile-like extraterrestrials who can disguise themselves as humans. On Earth, there is an ongoing rivalry between two factions. The Carrington Institute, founded by Daniel Carrington, is officially an R&D center, but secretly operates an espionage group in league with the Mayans. Datadyne, on the other hand, is a sinister weapons corporation with a clandestine link to the Skeeter, the player is cast as Joanna Dark, a new recruit to the Carrington Institute whose impeccable scores and training have earned her the codename Perfect Dark. The game begins with her mission to investigate suspicious reports from a Datadyne insider. In the process, she uncovers a conspiracy between Datadyne and the Skeeter. The Skeeter plans to steal an alien mega weapon from a crash spacecraft on the Earth's ocean floor and use it to annihilate the Mayans. When the President of the United States refuses to loan Datadyne the research vessel they need to retrieve the Mega Weapon, they plot to kill him and replace him with a Datadyne grown clone. Unbeknownst to Datadyne, the Skeeter also intend to test fire the Mega Weapon on Earth, destroying it in the process. With the help of other Carrington agents and a Mayan nicknamed Elvis, Joanna prevents the conspiracy by causing the weapon to self destruct. She then helps the Mayans launch a counterattack, destroying the Skeeter's battle shrine and eliminating their high priest, thereby issuing Skeeter morale a crippling blow. Section 2 Gameplay Perfect Dark features many elements that are typical of a first person shooter game, including a range of weapons to collect, enemies to defeat, and distinct environments to explore. It is frequently described as a spiritual sequel to Rare's earlier first-person shooter, GoldenEye 007, released in 1997. Although Perfect Dark is not set in the James Bond universe, the gameplay is extremely similar and it retains many of its predecessor's features, such as the ability to use stealth to tackle missions and objectives that vary with the difficulty setting. The weapons of Perfect Dark include handguns, rifles, submachine guns, a shotgun, rocket launchers, combat knives, grenade launchers, various explosives, and several fictitious extraterrestrial weapons. Almost all of the weapons in the game have two modes of fire, a primary mode in which the weapon is used in a typical fashion, 
and a secondary mode which tends to use the weapon in a more unconventional manner, such as pistol whipping or proximity detonation. Players can carry an unlimited number of weapons, and certain guns can be used in duplicate, one in each hand. Section 2.1 Solo Mode The player can explore the Carrington Institute and take part in a number of tutorials and training activities. The most substantial of these activities is the firing range, in which the player's proficiency with each of the game's weapons is tested against specific targets. Completing these trials unlocks so-called classic weapons, which are taken from GoldenEye 007. In Perfect Dark solo missions, the player controls Joanna through a series of levels collected together into missions. In each level, the player must complete certain objectives and then exit the stage. The requirements are varied, with many levels requiring the recovery and use of numerous high-tech gadgets. If Joanna is killed or fails an objective, the player must start the level again. There are three distinct difficulty levels in the single-player game. Agent, Special Agent, and Perfect Agent. There are a number of differences between the difficulty levels, including the objectives would have must be completed, amount of ammunition available, and enemy accuracy and damage. On higher difficulties, the optional auto-aiming, in which the game corrects slight aiming errors automatically, becomes less effective and bonus items such as protective shields are absent. Once the game has been completed on one difficulty level, the levels can be tackled in any order on the other difficulties. If all the levels are completed on Perfect Agent difficulty, an additional setting becomes available, titled Perfect Dark. This mode allows the player to customize various aspects of enemies, such as their health, their aiming accuracy, and the damage they inflict. Four bonus missions may be unlocked by the player. One, the duel, is a holographic training simulation against three opponents and is unlocked by completing all of the entry level weapon challenges in the firing range. The other three bonus missions are unlocked by completing the game on each of the three standard difficulties and allow the player to control other characters, Elvis, Mr. Blonde, and a Mayan warrior, in scenarios parallel to the main narrative. The gameplay is essentially unchanged, with objectives to accomplish and enemies to battle, but these characters do have some special characteristics, such as Mr. Blonde's cloaking device. Additionally, the player can unlock cheats by beating the levels within certain time limits. Some cheats, such as all weapons, can alternatively be unlocked by using the Perfect Dark Game Boy Color game and transfer pack. The cheats range from Perfect Darkness, which makes the level pitch dark but gives the player a pair of night vision goggles, to more traditional extras such as infinite ammo. The game includes a cooperative mode in which two players, or one player and up to three computer controlled players, tackle the mission together. If two humans play, the game uses a split screen display, with the option to split horizontally or vertically. Only one human player is required to survive the mission, although all the objectives must still be completed. Finally, there is a counter-op mode, in which one player plays the missions as Joanna, while the other takes the role of the enemy, including their weaponry in low health and attempts to stop her. Counter-op player takes control of another enemy if they are killed, and cannot cause the mission to fail directly by, for example, killing Joanna's allies before she meets them. The solo player areas feature numerous easter eggs and strange objects, areas and glitches to fuel the exploration efforts and wild speculation of many gamers. Rare staff have admitted that some of the oddities in the game were put there for a laugh, and that the constant barrage of questioning emails they got were sometimes a free source of amusement. Perhaps the most famous curiosity is the piece of cheese hidden on every level. Section 2.2 .2, Multiplayer The combat simulator is Perfect Dark's multiplayer mode. A game can be played with up to 4 human players and 8 computer controlled players. Again, a split screen is used if more than one human is playing. If 3 or 4 humans play, the screen is divided into quarters, with one quarter left blank if necessary. Players enter the game unarmed and with a certain amount of health. 
Weapons and ammunition are scattered around the level in preset positions. Once a player is killed, they are regenerated elsewhere in the level, once again unarmed. The overall objective of the game is determined by the scenario being played, of which there are six. Bullet Point 1 Combat The traditional deathmatch mode. Bullet Point 2 Capture the Case Perfect Dark's equivalent of Capture the Flag. Bullet Point 3 Hold the Briefcase Players must take the briefcase and survive with it for as long as possible. One point is received for every set number of seconds the case is held. If the player with the briefcase is killed, they drop the briefcase and it can be picked up by anyone else. Bullet Point 4 King of the Hill One area in the level is the hill. Points are awarded for locating this region and staying there for a set number of seconds. Having been captured in this way, the hill moves to a new location, or if a certain game setting was set, the hill remains in the same spot while the timer resets. Bullet Point 5 Hacker Central Players must locate a data uplink and use it to hack a computer system. Vote items are randomly placed in the level. The data uplink is moved to a new location when the player carrying it is killed. When hacking the computer system, the player cannot use weapons and cannot move from the terminal without breaking the link. Bullet point 6. Pop a cap. One player is the cap. All other players gain 2 points for killing the cap. The cap gains a point for every minute they survive. When another player kills the cap, another randomly selected person becomes the cap. Aspects of each game can be customized, such as the chosen arena, the weapons available, and the winning conditions. Players can be grouped into teams or compete individually. In a team game, the players can optionally be shown colored according to their team. Each game can be customized to a greater degree than was possible in GoldenEye 007's widely acclaimed multiplayer mode. For example, the earlier game only allowed players to specify a preset class of weapons, such as automatics, but in Perfect Dark, Players can individually select the weapons to be included and where each should be located. Shields may be placed in any of the weapon slots or omitted entirely. GoldenEye 007's body armor was fixed in one position for every level. Computer controlled bots, called simulants, can be included in the multiplayer game. The appearance, team affiliation, skill level, and playing characteristics of each simulant can individually be customized. For example, the Venn Sim always pursues the player that killed it last. The Fist Sim will not fire guns but will attack with punches and thrown weapons, while the Peace Sim does not fight at all but merely tries to disarm the other players. Simulants can perform superhuman feats on the highest difficulty settings, such as moving faster than the player can. During team matches, a human player can issue specific orders to the simulants on their team such as defend the base. The combat simulator includes 30 challenges, preset games against simulants which may be tackled by one or more players. The challenges cover a variety of game types, weapon arrangements, and level setups. As a player completes them, additional features, including new weapons, player models, and bot difficulties are unlocked in the combat simulator. At the end of the match, the overall results are shown, alongside information about the individual player's performance. Color-coded medals are awarded to the winners in several categories. Accuracy, Headshot, Killmaster for achieving most kills, and Survivor for suffering the fewest deaths. The game also acknowledges, often humorously, other aspects of performance by awarding messages such as AC-10, for people who frequently use body armor and mostly harmless or particularly ineffective players. Players can keep track of their performance by creating and saving multiplayer profiles. Each profile contains a ranking, ranging from beginner 21 to perfect 1, which is determined based on the accumulation of certain statistics such as the number of kills, time played, and ammunition used. The number of medals earned is also counted. A player achieving the rank of Perfect 1 is given the message user EntropicDK password 0 ta. Rare had originally intended these details to allow access to password protected parts of the official Perfect Dark website. 
but these sections were never implemented. Multiplayer profiles also allow players to customize their in-game appearance by selecting the head and body of any of the game's character models, excluding the Skeeter, as well as several which do not appear in the single player mode. A feature called Perfect Head, which appeared in previews of the game was, but was not included in the final product, was intended to take player customization further. This feature allowed the player to place a photograph of their choice onto their in-game character's face via a Game Boy camera. However, Perfect Head was dropped due to sensitive issues surrounding the ability to attack images of real people. Section 3 Development Martin Hollis, the director of GoldenEye 007 and Perfect Dark, described the development of the game in an interview with RetroGamer magazine. He explained that Rare rejected the prospect of working on the GoldenEye sequel Tomorrow Never Dies without hesitation as the development team felt they had spent too much time immersed in the James Bond universe. The decision to make the central character a woman was part of Hollis's belief that there should be more games centered on women. To this end, the team created Joanna Dark, influenced by a number of other fictional heroines. Kim Kimberly from Level 9 Computing's text adventure Snowball, the seductive spy Agent X-27 in 1930's film Dishonored, the eponymous femme fatale of the film Nikita, and FBI agent Dana Scully from television series The X-Files. The name Joanna Dark was taken from the French pronunciation of Joan of Arc as Jeanne Dark. Ghost in the Shell was a major influence on the character, setting, and plot. The name of the in-game company Datadyne was inspired by Yo-Yo Dine from The Crying of Lot 49 by Thomas Pynchon. Another significant influence on the game's locations was the work of author Philip K. Dick. Hollis explained that he and designer David Doak, quote, picked a range of locations we thought would be impressive and architectural on the model of golden eye but sci-fi dystopias. The settings came first. The plot was then constructed by David to sew them together, end quote. The word dark was chosen for its association with the game's bleak focus on killing. Hollis had noted the similarities to Criterion Software's naming of Black. Quote, Game developers just like Black, Nihilism, Dystopian Futures, The Number Zero, Infinity, Spears, Perfection, all that kind of stuff. End quote. The double slash symbol in the game's logo was inspired by the Japanese Dakuten mark. At one time, Nintendo of Japan considered releasing the game there under the title Akatakuro, literally Red and Black. Perfect Dark does not translate well into Japanese, and the title Red and Black was considered sufficiently edgy. However, it was eventually released as Pafe Kuto Daku, a transliteration of the Western title. Originally, Hollis hoped that the difference between light and dark would be a significant feature of the gameplay, and the title was intended to reflect this focus. A torch was implemented by Steve Ellis, responsible for much of the multiplayer mode in GoldenEye, but it was not included in the final game due to the limitations of the N64 hardware. Hollis remarked that such aims were overambitious, quote, Even today, you can see game developers struggle to make light and dark foundational from a gameplay perspective. I suspect it will take a few years before significant and pervasive gameplay innovation occurs here, end quote. Although not all of these intended features were realized, the game does contain more advanced lighting than GoldenEye. Lights can be shot out, gunfire illuminates rooms, and the player can use infrared and night vision goggles. Martin Hollis was involved with Perfect Dark for the first 14 months of his 3 year development, during which progress was slow. David Doak left at the end of 1998, and Steve Ellis soon after, to form Free Radical Design. What followed by those remaining on the project was a comprehensive redesign of the game. The story and characters being the main items kept intact, Hollis stated that he was impressed by the comprehensive range of multiplayer options, saying, quote, What a vast array of features I had never planned. End quote. Doak, however, remarked that, quote, Golden Eye pretty much exhausted the performance of the machine. It was hard to push it further. Perfect Dark had some good ideas, but was dog slow. End quote. The sentiment was echoed by many reviewers. Section 4 Game Engine 
The Perfect Dark Engine is a modified version of GoldenEye 007's, and many of the gameplay features are unchanged. For instance, the manual aiming system, originally inspired by Virtua Cop, is graphically enhanced but is essentially the same. Players can crouch, duck, and lean, but notably there is still no ability to jump. Despite this, it is possible to drop for most ledges, a feature you rarely use in GoldenEye. Most weapons have a finite magazine and must be reloaded after a certain number of shots. Interaction with the environment is via a single use command, which opens doors, activates computers, and so on. Enemies and players can disarm each other at close range, and the player can use this feature to steal weapons or knock foes unconscious. Unlike GoldenEye, Perfect Dark uses location-based damage. For example, a shot to the torso causes more damage than a shot to the limb. However, unlike GoldenEye, in the single-player mode, a headshot on the guard is instantly fatal on any difficulty level. The engine includes a number of graphical enhancements. The most conspicuous of these is the option to play in high-res 640x480 graphics. The N64 expansion pack is needed to load the large and detailed solo player levels, although a limited subset of the multiplayer options are available without this extension. The lighting system was improved so that the gunfire and explosions illuminate areas dynamically, and lights can be shot out to create darkened areas. Furthermore, if shot, enemies' blood will be projected onto nearby walls and objects. In GoldenEye, blood effects were limited, as the harm areas of the enemies would just turn red. Other graphical novelties include weapon-specific reload animations, as opposed to GoldenEye, where weapons simply were lowered out of sight and came back up to view fully loaded, and the dizzy effect. If a player is punched, poisoned by a throwing knife, or shot with a tranquilizer gun, they become dizzy, represented through a motion blur view. The degree of blurring increases with dizziness, and a badly stunned player may have difficulty seeing anything at all. Both the NTSC and PAL versions of the game ran full screen with a widescreen option, while some earlier Nintendo 64 games such as Super Mario 64 ran letterbox on PAL systems for technical reasons. The disadvantage of such detailed graphics is that the frame rate inevitably suffers in some areas. This was one of the main criticisms leveled at the game by reviewers. The same limitation was present in GoldenEye, but the other graphical enhancements in Perfect Dark served to exacerbate the problem. In multiplayer, the game must render the scene separately for each player, although at reduced resolution. Nevertheless, the frame rate issues arise again, particularly if a large number of simulants are involved. Perfect Dark's engine offered audio features that has not been available on N64 before. For example, it was one of the few games to offer Dolby surround sound. Some of the game's audio data was compressed as MP3 in order to fit into the relatively small storage space offered by a cartridge, though the music was sequenced. There is full voice acting for all the dialogue, and the guards can be heard having conversations amongst themselves about the events of the level. The artificial intelligence of the guards includes the ability to call for help and sound nearby alarms. The guards can be alerted by nearby gunfire, and the various weapons in the game have distinct volumes. For example, guards are less likely to be alerted by silenced pistols than high-powered rifles. Additionally, they are able to throw grenades and if the player disarms them, draw a secondary weapon. One criticism raised of Golden Eye 007's guards was their weakness at very close range, since their weapons appear to shoot straight to the player. This was resolved in Perfect Dark, whose guards can deliver kicks at close range, inflicting damage and causing dizziness. In Golden Eye, the guards could not see through glass, a feature included deliberately so that the player can spy on foes through windows. This aspect is retained in Perfect Dark, although enemies can now see and shoot over railings. In the later stages of the game, the player encounters Skeeter enemies still in reptilian form, and while the Skeeter weapons and characteristics are different, their AI is qualitatively the same. The multiplayer simulants are considered more advanced, and have the majority of the faculties of a human player. While they have the ability to complete multiplayer objectives such as capturing the briefcase, 
they are not able to use some of the weapons, such as mines. Even on the highest skill setting, simulants make no attempt to avoid simple traps such as proximity mines or sentry guns. There are a number of bugs in the game engine. For example, in the first level, a flaw in the collision detection makes it possible to pass through a supposedly solid wall, allowing the level to be completed in just 6 seconds. Also, as with many older FPSs, players can use a technique called strafe running or speed strafing to exploit a bug in the engine whereby moving diagonally allows the player to move faster than running forward or sideways alone. This technique is almost essential to achieving some of the target times required to unlock cheats. Section 5, Release and Sales Rare announced in mid-1998 that their follow-up to GoldenEye would appear at that year's E3 as Nintendo's lead game, and claimed that the game, using the same engine as its predecessor, would be available by Christmas 1998. The release date gradually slipped, but the game continued to be heavily trailed in magazines, with Nintendo Official Magazine predicting that it would be the best shooting game this century. A working version of the game appeared at the European Computer Trade Show 1998. N64 described the preview as having, quote, the kind of attention to detail that everyone who saw it, drooling, end quote. Shortly before release, Rare unveiled a number of websites for companies in the game's universe, such as Datadyne.com, to promote interest in the game's storyline. The first release of the game came on May 22, 2000 in North America. Nintendo arranged a number of publicity stunts to promote the release, including hiring model Michelle Merkin to do in-store promotions as a real-life Joanna Dark. Total sales for the game reached 1.3 million copies in the United States. The European release followed on June 30th, and finally the game was released in Japan on October 21st. The Japanese launch was a success, with the sale of 35,000 copies in the first week and 77,000 in total. Worldwide, Perfect Dark sold 2.5 million copies. Section 6. Critical Reaction Upon release, Perfect Dark received strong reviews from magazines and websites alike. IGN opined that the game features amazing graphics and the most well-rounded multiplayer mode ever to grace Nintendo 64, saying that their only gripe with the game is its sometimes sluggish frame rate. GameSpot concluded that there's finally a game that has eclipsed GoldenEye 007. Gaming Age described it as probably one of the best FPSs to be released in quite a while, but concedes that there are some nasty frame rate problems at times. GameCritics.com criticized the weak characters and unoriginal storyline, but nevertheless adjudged that the extraordinary amount of high quality multiplayer modes and features meant that the game is still a blast. GameRevolution.com again criticized the game's technical shortcomings, noting the occasional slowdown and a few polygonal glitches, but overall concluded that Perfect Dark shines out as one of the best N64 games. The overall positive reaction from critics can be gauged by the results of review compilation sites. For example, GameRankings.com makes it the third most highly rated game on the Nintendo 64 and claims that the game improves upon the awesome multiplayer mode that made its sick predecessor, GoldenEye, a smash hit. Metacritic describes the game as meeting with universal acclaim and Rotten Tomatoes who considers the game fresh. Rare was also recognized for its work on the game, as the company was awarded the BAFTA Interactive Entertainment Moving Images Award for 2000 and the Golden Satellite Award for Best Interactive Product in 2001. Section 7, Legacy. Another game also titled Perfect Dark was released for the Game Boy Color in September 2000, shortly after the Nintendo 64 game. The storyline of the game was considerably different from the Nintendo 64 incarnations, as it follows Joanna's attempt to shut down an illegal cyborg manufacturer. While the game uses an overhead rather than first-person view, it has a number of advanced features for a portable game. For example, the game's cutscenes feature sampled speech, and a rumble facility akin to the N64's rumble pack is built into the cartridge. 
Perfect Dark was the last major first-person shooter game for the Nintendo 64, which was already nearing the end of its lifespan. Nintendo unveiled their new console, the GameCube, at Space World 2000. The game was also the last appearance of the GoldenEye 007 slash Perfect Dark engine. More recent critical opinion of the game has not been so positive. For example, in 2006, Revolution Europe described it as having a lack of imagination and chronic design flaws. 20 months before Perfect Dark was released, some of the development team left Rare to form Free Radical Design. This company went on to develop the PlayStation 2 game Time Splitters, another first person shooter based around a completely new engine. Time Splitters and its sequels bear many gameplay and presentational similarities to GoldenEye and Perfect Dark, including a similar manual aiming system, missions with structured objectives, cheat options unlockable to quick level completions, and the earning of multiplayer awards. Meanwhile, Rare began development of a prequel titled Perfect Dark Zero for the Nintendo GameCube, but was purchased from Nintendo by Microsoft in 2002. Soon after, it was announced that Perfect Dark Zero would in fact be an Xbox title. Later, it was decided instead to release it for the Xbox 360, and it became a launch title for that system. This game retains Perfect Dark's first-person perspective and mission objective system, and Joanna Dark remains the lead character. The game's multiplayer mode allows many more computer players thanks to the more advanced Xbox 360 hardware, and can also be played online, which was not possible with the Nintendo 64. In some quarters, the game has been criticized for not having advanced enough in Perfect Dark. IGN complained that the enemies behaved much like they did on the N64. Perfect Dark worldwide sales were not as great as its predecessor's 8 million, and Joanna Dark did not attain the same status in pop culture as some other video game heroines such as Tomb Raider's Laura Croft. However, the game's universe continues to be developed with the release of the novel Perfect Dark Initial Vector, a rare sanctioned paperback by Greg Rucka. The novel is set in the time between Perfect Dark Zero and Perfect Dark, and, and portrays Joanna Dark as an ex-bounty hunter drawn into the Carrington Institute's battle with Data Dine with to her own vendetta against the Weapons Corporation. Rucka stated, quote, If you play the first game, you're going to get a huge treat, because a lot of stuff that happens in Perfect Dark we set up in a novel, end quote. He also revealed that at least two more books are planned, and asked if he intends to write them himself, he replied, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I've got the room on my schedule. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.